I'm Lady Green. Joining me tonight is a cat who is phenomenal, patient, and uh, a gangster, and an actor, and a singer, and soon to be a director. I was trying to get his chair personally embroidered today because I know director is the next title that he's putting yes, on. Yes, sir. Yes, so, sir. Jesse Smollett, thank you, man, for thank coming by. Thank you for by. having me so much. A thank pleasure you. to finally see you, man. A pleasure to see you. Yes, sir. Brother, you must be excited. To I'm say the least. excited. I'm I'm blessed. I'm grateful. I'm free. I, yeah. <laughs> yes, for you are. sure. You for are sure. free. Sure. You have just um, released your first debut album. Mm -hmm. Happy, you, and you're looking like a smoothed out, light skin Nat King Cole. You know what I mean? Oh, Nat King Cole. Smoothed out. I mean, you, you wear the tuck. You I mean you. you got that's what's up, Nat King that, Cole. Cla you classy, that's man. the man right there. He is the man. That's and, the man. And you are the new man on the top. Thank you, sir. Appreciate Brother, that so, so much. Uh, I know this has probably been in the making because you have been singing for quite some time. And who would ever thought? Because I'm a big fan of Empire. Thank you. Big fan. So, but I never had thought in the very, very beginning that Empire would have progressed in the way with musically, and the songs on the show actually became phenomenal hits mm -hmm. because the show is just so phenomenal. Thank so, you very much. Kudos to you and to everybody. But Thank you. Was this album on hold for quite some time because the show was? and has and still is doing phenomenally well yeah it, it had to um you know i was working on my album before i booked empire and then you know i had released an ep called the poison hearts club mm -hmm. prior probably like i don't know four years before i booked empire or maybe like three years three years before i booked empire and then i had to pull all of that down once i booked it well wow. um and everything just got put on pause and you know i'm obviously grateful for being on Empire because it gave me a platform that I would never have Tremendous. had had I not been on the show. Um, but you know, there comes a time where you kind of get creative blue balls, if you will. Okay. You know, where it's this uh, it's this moment where you are still as grateful as you've always been, right. but you settle into that gratitude and you start to look around. And you're like, okay, so what else? You know, and then once you look around and everybody's like, yeah, we're going to do this album, we're going to do this, and then it keeps on being pushed back, you kind of at some point have to take it into your own hands. Or or I should say I had to take it into my own hands and, and just do it. And I did. You, you're continuously going up the ladder of what else is next. Yeah, do definitely. You, do, do you put um, pretty much a list together? Did you take it out of the mental and put it into the physical, write down your goals in, in terms of what you're trying to achieve? I, I and do, how are you doing so far with this? I do write down my goals. I'm doing pretty good so far, um, <clears throat> but it's all in my head as well. Like I know right. there's a very clear picture of what I want out of my life, what I want out of my career, what I want for my family, what I want for my mother, um, what I want you know, in the future when I get married and have kids. Right. I know what I want. So for that, you know, that's why I've literally directed every single video for my album so far because it's just I know what I want and right now I need to set the tone for what that's going to be before trusting anybody else to kind of put their hand in it. Well, let's set the tone right now cuz being so the album is officially out it and is people can get it on iTunes, right? Everywhere. <laughs> Not CDs no. yet, Lenny. <laughs> okay, okay. <I> in <laughs> May. I got you. It may, May. Okay, May. But the first single is dropping. The first, well, you have two videos out for mm -hmm. it. Freedom yeah, dropped. Freedom. Um, and the video for Freedom dropped with uh, the amazing Tika Sumter and Cynthia Revo. Oh, man. Incredible. incredible. I thought we would see you in this video. No, you know what? I didn't want nobody from Empire in my video, and that included me. I hear that. So, I hear that. Well, you know what? So, it was the, I had to, there had to be a separation of church and state, if you will. You know what I'm saying? And I had to really set it down and make people like the song and make people um, respect the visual and the story that I was trying to tell. And then, you know, Catch Your Eye came out with Swizz, and I wasn't going to be in that video either. But then Swizz, Swizz said that he would be in the video. I was like, all right, I'm going to jump in this video for sure. Jesse Smollett with us tonight from Empire, Jamal is finally here. So yes. let's go into freedom and we'll come back and find out what the inspiration was behind it. Yes, sir. This is the calm before the storm. I'm going to get Jesse out of the building because I know he's trying to take my gig on this, but Man, I'm just I trying to join. Man. I'm trying to be Jimmy Fallon to your Jay Leno. Why don't you understand okay, okay, that? When right. you, you know don't want to do it anymore, 20 years down the road, you know what I'm saying? You know what? Then I hope I hope I can do something else. Maybe carry your records in or prep for your I show. I mean, you know? you, listen, you will always have a place at the quiet <laughs> I went, storm. I went, oh, 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 this cat. <laughs> Jesse Smollett with <laughs> us tonight. Thank you for having me. Allow me to have a place to say, listen, brother. I appreciate listen, that, bro. You gave me a chance. I'm gonna make sure you can stick around. You know, and they say, say, bless you, brother. I like ginger ale. <laughs> <laughs> A certain way, too. Just one cube of ice. There you go. I know. I know. Hey, man, let's talk about season five. Yeah. 
Well, it's actually, back, it's though. still season four. It's season 4.2. So oh, it's coming it up. It's season four. But you know how we oh, split it that, in half. Yeah, we do like do Scandal split. does. We do like How to Get Away with Murder does, where That's we right. split it so it's nine and nine. You keep it seems like we're in like season eight, but yes, we're only yes. in season four. But look, but look, 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 look how it's just been growing, man. Yeah, it's been wonderful. When you look back at season one, when you were just first coming on set, mm -hmm. did you ever think it would mass to this level of success? I mean, it's not, and I've said this a lot because I get asked that a lot. I, it's not that I didn't think that it would be successful. Right. It's just that I didn't think. You know what I'm saying? I've been in the just business what? for a really long time, and I feel like as an artist, it's not, it, it can be counterproductive to make the assumption that something is gonna be successful and it's gonna resonate with people. All you can do is do the best work that you can do. You know what I'm saying? My mother always said it's not about awards, it's about doing award caliber material. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with a successful show or a successful film or a successful album. You do what you do the best that you can do, and then hopefully it resonates. You know, we never create art you know, and put it out there. If we wanted to create art and just keep it to ourselves, then we mm -hmm. would. But if you put art, if you put it out there, you want people to hear it, or at least I do. I yeah, want yeah. people to hear some of my music. Sure. I want people to hear, I want people to see Empire. I want people to watch the movies that I'm making. But at the same time, that's not the deciding factor over whether it's good or not. I knew that what we had with Empire was something special. I knew that it was going to be critically acclaimed, but I didn't expect that it was going to be some juggernaut of a phenomenon that right. it's become. You know? Well, you know, now you're going to get a chance to put your stamp on it as a director. Yes. Sir. What are you most anticipating? Like what? Well, it just happened. I just I just wrapped a week ago yesterday. A week ago, yeah, a week ago today. So how did that feel? It felt incredible. It did felt it? incredible. I got to. I got to direct my friends. I got to direct my family, but I also got to direct some of the greatest actors Good. on the face of the planet. Aside from obviously Terrence and Taraji, mm. Alfred Woodard just joined the cast as Cookie's mm. mother. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, come with that. Mm. Alfred Woodard just joined the cast. Let me repeat that. Alfred Woodard. Woodard just joined the cast as Cookie Lion's mother. <laughs> oh, this is gonna get it great. It is over. Yes. You know, um, Forrest Whitaker, I got to direct him, and they're like, they want real notes. They're real actors. You know what I'm saying? They're not above getting notes or anything like that. And it, it was, um, it was incredible. And and it's interesting because four years. What people don't know, because I never really talk about this, is the day that I went. I've known Alfred since I was 14 years old, 15 years old. And the day that I went into the audition for Empire, my first audition that morning, I had breakfast with Alfred, and she prayed with me. Wow. And I went into the audition, the first audition, and seven auditions later, I got it. But four years to the day that mm. I booked Empire, I was directing Alfred Woodard in Empire. Look at, look so it's right. just the way that it comes full circle is just insane to me. Now, you started as a child actor, mm -hmm. but you also have siblings, you know? Yeah. Now, now, two of your sisters are, are actors as well. Yeah, my, my little sister is still an actor. My older sister is lifestyle personality and producer, and, and my little brother's a chef, and my oldest brother and youngest brother, they're the smart ones they got out of the business. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they have to be sitting back now and say, you know what, my brother's a No, they're doing pretty, pretty good for themselves, good. but they still, like, my my youngest brother is in tech, and my older brother runs a nonprofit that helps developmentally disabled people, oh, wow. uh, trains them to be in the workforce and, and, and stay there. So they're doing great, but, you know, we all, that to me just shows that we were never bullied by my mother into doing this. You know, it was always a thing of, yes, this is our family business. Yeah. Yes, this is making money. But at the same time, if you want to leave, you can. You know, mm. so there was never a moment where, you know, I got out of the business when I was almost 13 and I just started honing my craft as a musician. And I didn't really want to do acting until I got into like my mid 20s and I needed money. And <laughs> I was talk. like, Real um, <laughs> I might have to go back to the thing that I need that I know. Real talk. Because uh, this situation, because I'll be calling up SAG every couple weeks being like, yo, I saw Mighty Ducks on. <laughs> and I'm going to need that money. I need that money right? real quick. <laughs> like calling them up like bill collectors. I got, I got bill collectors calling my phone. I'm going to need y'all to give me that. Run that check. Where's that check? Run that $400 that's check. <laughs> so, you know, I started having to act again because that's just 
what it was. What was um, in your DNA, baby? That's, that's yeah, it's line. definitely in my DNA. And and you can't you can't get that all the time. You know, yeah. if it's not naturally there, it's not naturally there. Jesse Smollett is with us. Uh, you just heard a song from the uh, forthcoming album that's going to be released in May. Uh, no, it, the album is out now, Lenny. Okay, okay. The, the CD. So you the thinking CD. the album's not out because the CD's not out. That's right. You only thinking about the compact disc. That's all I am. Because you know what? Because you can tell I'm the a compact album. disc collector. <laughs> <laughs> you trying to look in the liner notes. <laughs> I am. I do. <laughs> You want to just see the that. title come across How'd your you phone? How'd you know? I understand, I brother, because I'm that same way. Uh, That's you, why I'm going to take I'm over really the quiet storm. Oh, there we go. This just a small look. <laughs> Get me into another track on this album, man, so we can get uh, you out of here tonight. I think that we should play, I feel like, I feel like we should play Hurt People. Hurt People is the third single and probably, honestly, the main single right now because it'll be the last single that I drop until May when Empire uh, is over. Uh, wow. Because I can't drop my own music when Empire is on. So Hurt People, the video is coming out uh, in about a week and a half. And it was shot in South Africa. And I directed it. Wow. And it's probably, honestly, I say this with all the humility in my heart, it's probably one of the greatest things that I've done in my life. You said it was inspired by Nelson Mandela. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you used most of the um, most of the people from South Africa. Everybody in, in the video, minus my, um, minus my choreographer, Jasmine, uh, is black South African. Now, I saw you all the designers of the clothes, black South Africans, the whole crew, everybody. It was, um, we shot all throughout Johannesburg and Soweto and, and we shot at the Constitution Hill uh, prison that Mandela was brought before being taken to Robben right. Island. So it was really, really, really special. I saw you performing on the GMA, yeah. uh, and it was well received, obviously. Thank you. Uh, so let's go into it. Hurt people. Yeah, it's hurt, hurt people. people. Hurt people, hurt people. And then they say goodbye. And then they say goodbye. Jesse Smollett with us inside of the car before the storm. Hey, baby, pour that glass of wine tonight. Ladies, get ready for that bubble bath because the quiet storm is on the way, and we're going to make it right and sexy for you because I know you've had a long day. But I'm trying to ease the pain as much as I can. Jesse Smollett is with me from Empire, so let's have a good time. If they're taking their bubble bath, you need to play Ha Ha, I Love You. <laughs> Girl, take your bubble bath. Girl. Hey, girl. Well, we'll get to that next. <laughs> I, I, I love you, Jesse Smollett. Hey, look, man, c congratulations. Great job in uh, Marshall. Thank man. you. Thank you. Yeah, Je now, you are a big fan, I heard, of Langston Hughes. Oh, my gosh. So huge. that was perfect for you. Right? It was wonderful. It was wonderful. First of all, that's my middle name. Second of all, um, my very first book, my mother would always have adult books that once we got to a certain age, she would buy for us or give to us mm -hmm. to read. I think my older sister was like the autobiography of Malcolm X or, or Jubilee. Wow. My older brother was the Booker T. Washington autobiography and, and, the autobi and mine that my mom gave me was The Ways of White Folks. Oh, wow. And, uh, and I just remember specifically reading Cora Unashamed and it was one of my... I've never, I was almost seven. Yeah, I was like seven because we were still in New York. And uh, I just remember being so touched by and so emotional at such a young age about that story alone that I started just reading everything I could get my hands on yeah. about Langston Hughes. Yeah. Um, and I love him. And then I was at the Image Awards performing a tribute to John Legend and Reggie Hudlin was, the great Reginald Hudlin was directing, I uh, was producing the show. He came up to me, he's like, listen, I'm doing uh, Marshall, I'm doing the Thurgood Marshall story with Chadwick Boseman. Mm. This was before Black Panther, but we still exactly. already knew, we, he, the brother had already played Jackie Robinson, he had already played James Brown, we already knew he's phenomenal and can literally do anything. He yeah. could play Meryl yeah. Streep, yeah. we believe it. You know what I'm saying? That's like Chadwick Boseman <laughs> as Meryl <laughs> Streep. And I'm like, I believe it, the brother could do it. He you know what I'm saying? He can pretty much Anything. proven beyond measure. Absolutely can do yes, anything. Um, so that was just a no-brainer. But then he said, he said, I really want you to come and do a cameo as Langston Hughes. And I'm like, are wow. you serious? Wow. Because I've been saying all these years, I want to play Langston Hughes. So right before I went to play Langston Hughes, I went to Hughes' house to his old house in Harlem and I was able to go inside and spend some time and touch his typewriter and, and you know, that breathe the same air. Actor, yeah, you definitely. Just to see the surroundings, to kind of see where they live, to see that, to feel the air that they, mm. they breathe, mm. that they, th those, he, he was breathing in that house. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm, I know he was breathing all over Harlem and all over New York and, Impactful. and, you know, yeah. um, Cuba and, and everywhere, but at the same time to be somewhere that you actually knew that this man walked around, this was his home, and all of the different amazing 
people that came through that house. Phenomenal. It was just, you know, it was amazing. We went, and it was just one scene, but it was really, really special. It was a great scene. Thank you. I, and I love what you're working, man. Thank you. Look, I can't uh, thank you enough, brother, for, for coming by and no, sitting down with us. No, thank you for having me. Uh, this season of Empire, what, will Jamal find love that stays with him, or that's too, a little bit too boring? First of all, of Jamal needs to, like, put on some metal draws. <laughs> like, that brother needs to stop for a minute. Because you are, how do I say? Out of control? Skank adjacent. Ooh. You feel me? Yeah. Like, he's not all the way there. But he's, but he's got to slow it down. Maybe concentrate on his music. Maybe concentrate on, you know... I don't know what he should concentrate on, but he should probably, you know, just chill. Falls in love too quick. I, which I understand. I fall in love really quickly also. But, mm. you know, you, you got to just chill a little bit. Well, you know, but your generation, though, likes to go from zero to a thousand. I know. But at the same time, it's like, you know, he's been through like 49 relationships <laughs> and it's only season four. Exactly. Like he had been with everybody. Exactly. Sky Summers was everything. Uh, Alicia Keys. And you know the therapist treated him really well, also Philip. But everybody else just treats him dirty, does him dirty. And I'm just like, this ain't your life, Jamal. Get it together. Well, you know what? We're looking very, very closely at how he progresses in this, and hopefully, well, you know, he killed Angelo. Yeah. So that's a problem. I know. So now he got something else to deal with. But, you know, but Jamal has a, a fiery punch. I didn't know he because he, he jacked up the brother in the, in the dining room. You know. What well, I'm saying? you know, I believe in my other life. I was too hot. <laughs> Oh, well, you are a gangster. I believe that. You're a gangster. Well, I'm a gangster. We found out a little earlier. I'm gangster today. as hell. Yes, you know what yes, I'm saying? Yes, I, I don't bail for shot of jail, California dream it. As uh, soon uh, as I step on uh, the scene. Uh, See, I'm uh, an MC okay, too. Okay, you okay. ain't know that. But Come you on. Wear many hats. I'm going to get this on man out of here because I know he's going to be in here next week doing the quiet storm. Y'all don't know my life. Y'all don't know the things I've been through. No, I don't. But you know what? You're going to come back. <laughs> I'm going to come back at when I release my rap CD. Oh, boy. No, no, you won't be coming like back. Like Tyrese did when he was black tie. And, and you saw what happened with that. So don't come back on the rap CD. It looks stiff. I'm be Caramel J. That's okay. Hey, look. She'll be fire. <laughs> just <Justice> Fire. <laughs> Justin Smollett, thank you, man. <laughs> thank you, man. Get out of here, See, Lenny trying to get me up out of here. Out she don't want me to take over this show. We're going to light some candles. Storm I'm going to make sure these ladies Smollett. take that little bath. And we'll Jussie come back with Smollett. more what you want, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, I can still keep my job. The calm before the storm.